you always known that you're on a soul path? And have you wondered how to gain real insight into the steps along your own unique journey? Welcome everyone, I'm Sarah Main, and thank you for joining me on Dhammayanti, the show for your soul. It's great to have you join me. Dhammayanti means deep peace and calm. Dhammayanti sheds a light for your soul through the gift of wisdom that shines in the beautiful and universal language of Sanskrit. Dhammayanti is the show that speaks to your soul, connects with your soul and enriches your soul. Welcome everyone. Hi there. Welcome along to Dhammayanti, the show for your soul with me, Sarah Main. And today's show is on making a real difference. Every bit counts. Absolutely every bit counts. It may not seem like that, but every little bit counts. And let's just dive right in with, you know, do you matter? You do matter. So every bit counts. Um, Look, let's face it, in a world of overwhelm where we're constantly presented with two different, well, apparently contradictory things, well, they are contradictory in concept anyway, um, that the universe, firstly, that the universe is huge, the earth is a mere speck in this vast universe, this vast cosmos, um, that we're tiny little specks, And um, we're just made up of physical matter and therefore anything we do basically has no effect, no consequence, and we can't make actual change. That is a view, okay? And the second view, that's why we're presented with these contradictory um, inputs all the time. The second view is that we are significant. We're unique, powerful, conscious And in some mysterious way, we matter. And the only way of reconciling these two apparent contradictions is if that minute speck, which is us, somehow has genuine cosmic reach, somehow has actual cosmic impact. So get the two. One, that there's this vast cosmos, we're a speck, And basically anything we do doesn't make any real difference. Okay, that is one view. The other view is that we are significant, we're unique, powerful, conscious, and in some mysterious way, we matter. So how do we reconcile those two views? Because we are being presented with them, either we're aware of it or not, but that is actually the sort of um, messaging in, in the broader perspective. So these two apparent contradictions, um, the way to reconcile it is that this apparent minute speck somehow has genuine cosmic reach, has a cosmic impact. Um, Look, basically, because either it does or it doesn't, this is a binary thing. So if it doesn't, that is, we don't have any cosmic reach, then you can stop listening now, end of, that's it, you know. Go about your day. But because you believe that it does, you believe it does have cosmic significance, that's why you're listening to this, Um, that name of that personal spec comes in different forms. But the one that basically most traditions and wisdom traditions can all agree on and which is, it's obvious, it's self-evident, and doesn't need any proof, the name of that so-called speck, what we experience as us as an individual, is I am. That's a name, I am. But we need to unravel this mystery, this power, the significance, the meaning, and the frankly, the magic of I am. And that's a, um, you know, that's a work that's well worth doing in this lifetime. So the heart and the core purpose of all philosophies of religions and faiths and beliefs can in some way be summarised as penetrating the depth and true meaning of I am. I am. Because that's what the faiths and religions and beliefs are naming this so-called 
what is often called as a cosmic speck. So in the Vedic tradition, in Sanskrit, it said, aham brahmasmi, aham brahmasmi. And that's one of the four Mahavakyas, and they are the four principal sayings of the Advaita tradition. Aham brahmasmi. And it basically says, I am the limitless consciousness Brahman. Aham brahmasmi. I am the limitless consciousness Brahman. That's one tradition. In the Judeo-Christian tradition in the Bible, we're told, be still and know that I am God. Basically saying the same thing as the Mahavakya Aham Brahmasmi. Be still and know that I am God. That's Psalm 46, verse 10. And also in the Bible, in Exodus, uh, book 3, verse 14, chapter 3, verse 14, I am that I am. I am that I am. And in the Greek tradition, in the Greek ancient Greek philosophical tradition, inscribed over the entrance to the Oracle of Delphi in Greece is know thyself, know thyself. And I think if I, my Greek is, um, I don't have much Greek, but this is a sort of an approximation of the Greek pronunciation, know thyself, it's gnoti seaton, gnoti seaton, know thyself. So we have aham brahmasmi, I am the limitless consciousness Brahman. That's from the Advaita tradition in Sanskrit. Judeo-Christian Judeo tradition in the Bible, be still and know that I am God. And also I am that I am. And in the ancient Greek philosophical tradition, know thyself, gnoti seaton. So what? You know, fine. Okay, fine. So you can sit in a room and meditate all day, gaze at your navel. Um, but is that what you're here to do? Is that what you're meant to do? Surely there's a world out there of people who live and laugh and work and cry and do things and create things and build things and enjoy things. Um, so don't we have a moral, a, a moral and ethical role to play in all of this? Isn't this something we're meant to be doing? And it's important to address our minds, our reason to this whole thing so that we're in this sort of swirl often of overwhelm in the world from day to day. So let's just stop and actually get some clarity and some focus and some direction. So don't we have a role to play here in making our own lives and the lives of everyone else a little bit better? You would think, and surely the answer is a resounding yes. So the next thing is, does the search for meaning for the understanding of I am, which is basically what all this is about, we may not see it on a day-to-day -day basis like this, but that's what it is, um, for this understanding of I am have a significance in our responsibilities to others. So what I was taught from a young age was a twofold approach. One, to discover inner truth and pure being, to discover I am, to the, the meaning, to delve into this, to discover inner truth and pure being, that divine spark, that universality, that limitlessness, to discover inner truth and pure being, that's one. And secondly, to take that knowledge into the world through the power of attention and by doing so to respond fully with love, care, knowledge, courage and so on to the moment, to the matter in hand, to the situation in the present moment. All right, so get that. One, to discover inner truth and pure being and two, to take that knowledge into the world through the power of attention by doing so and responding fully with all love, care, knowledge, courage, whatever was needed, to the matter in hand, to the situation, to the moment. In other words, to, up, in other words, to uplift. 
to elevate and raise the level of consciousness in every moment. Because you can't raise consciousness yesterday or tomorrow. You can only do it now. You can only raise consciousness now. And you do that in the present moment by being present, to uplift, to elevate in every moment, raise the level of consciousness. So returning to the original conundrum of the personal and the cosmic, it's this search for inner meaning and connection coupled with the external connections and responsiveness to them that we discover, it's in that, that we discover the universality and the cosmic significance of I am. And the truth of the great saying, one of the Mahavakya, Aham Brahmasmi. And further, let's just consider this a little bit more, that every other apparent insignificant speck is similarly universal. Every moment is universal, everyone is universal, despite how it appears. So I've painted a big picture here. If we're talking about making a real difference, every bit counts. You need the bigger picture. You need the broader view. You need to helicopter out of the day-to-day -day work, laundry, shopping, cooking, family, whatever, right? And just get that bigger view. So now let's talk more about the external connections and responsiveness to them. All right? So these external connections, um, these days it's easier. It's just easier to complain and be negative. So, um, and that's the sort of level of consciousness that we're at um, as a collective in general. I mean, there are tons of people making fantastic efforts. That's why I'm supremely optimistic um, in general. But meeting day to day, unless people are really working on themselves and doing that inner work, to discover that inner truth and, and pure being of themselves and therefore of all those around them, um, you are left at the, the behest of the collective consciousness, which can tend to be downwards, right? Not so positive and challenging, frankly. So that's what I'm going to talk about further after the break. I'm going to stop for a break soon. And then after the break, I'm going to talk about these external connections and responsiveness and how we can make a positive effort against any tendency to be drawn down into any collective negativity because we don't want that. We are significant. Everything, every effort that we make to uplift counts. And so we want to make as many efforts as possible. So I will see you after the break and let's dig into. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back to Damayanti, the show for your soul. And today's show, making a real difference, every bit counts. It sure does. Absolutely. And in this day and age, every bit counts, no matter how slim and slight and little it may appear on a day-to-day -day basis and gosh I know about that too um, but every moment counts in terms of raising the level making a real difference uplifting elevating um, your life your life experience and the lives of those around you and the collective so let's talk about these external connections and our responsiveness to them. We, you know, in the first half I, I was talking about establishing that we are, and all the great traditions confirm this, so our approach day to day, as I was taught, was one, to discover this inner truth and pure being and then to express that in the world, in your day-to-day -day life, through the power of attention in the present moment, giving fully uh, with love, with care, with knowledge, courage, whatever is required, strength, resilience, uh, humour, joy, uh, peace, whatever, um, so that we're always 
raising the level of consciousness. We're elevating, we're uplifting, not just ourselves, but those around us and therefore contributing to the collective uplift. Um, so let's just talk about this external, these apparent external connections. In other words, living our life day to day, meeting our life experience moment by moment. Now, look, my observation these days is it's it's easier to complain, to be negative, to whinge. Um, it's just that seems to be the sort of default easier path to take. It takes an effort to be positive sometimes. Social media, for heaven's sake, is a prime example of this. It's a great tool, but gosh, without vigilance and intention and determination, there is just so much negativity that can just stream. And people don't realise it. They're just saying what they think. But just saying what you think without due care is not, in my view, acceptable if you are interested in raising and uplifting. Because often what can come out is something that's a bit nasty. It can be negative. It can be a dig. It can be... Um, passive aggressive I mean gosh I know about that um it can be all sorts of things it can be just a sort of backhanded put down whatever um and I know you get frustrated but you have to be very careful about how our how we meet um these external connections it's just easier these days to just kind of go blah with negativity in thought in feelings in speech so it takes a conscious, intentional decision and effort to be positive, okay? And look, some people are more naturally inclined to be positive, to, to have an upbeat view of life, um, but even they experience challenges uh, to being positive. But when we're positive, it just feels better. I mean, it took me a while. Like I, I was sort of vastly overworked in my early years of teaching and it sort of led me to feel oh, real put upon. Uh, but I saw around me, uh, particularly from the school principal and deputy principal, they were making a conscious decision um, to be positive and to see the, the positive in a situation that was sometimes appearing to be less than positive. And at first I thought, oh, look, that's just being Pollyanna and it's papering over things. But then I began to see the real, how smart that was and how the outcome was always so much better for everyone. I thought, I've got to try this, even though sometimes it just felt so counterintuitive. <laughs> but instantly it feels better. I felt better. All right. It just feels better. You just feel connected, not disconnected. Um, you just sort of feel more in the vibration of love, love that natural in between in our life, in our human connections in every moment it was just more available. Um, so when we're positive, we just feel good. We feel uplifted. We feel elevated. We feel expanded and not contracted. It doesn't mean we don't still have to deal with some tricky, sometimes yucky situations, you know, hard situations. But if we're doing it from a positive point of view, um, the outcome is so much better and we can feel connected the whole way through. It is just so worth it. And I've really learned from my own experience. So these days, depending where you look, you know, there just seems to be more negativity and it's more powerful. It seems that the good, the light, the godly is less prevalent, sometimes almost weaker. But this isn't true. It isn't true. Even at a simple day-to-day -day level, the effect of turning to the positive is felt instantly. It's like a light switch going on. The darkness, the negative, is dispelled immediately, just like in a dark room switching on the light. The darkness is dispelled. Even if the light's a little bit dim, it can be bright and we can turn the dimmer up, okay? This is the move from darkness to light. Tamaso ma jyotir gamaya in Sanskrit. This is the move from darkness to light. Lead me from darkness to light. So every little moment, every little uh, effort, every little bit of positivity helps. It counts. It makes a difference.
Okay, how can it not? Every moment is the present moment. It's the reality. Not yesterday, not tomorrow, now. Of course it's going to make a difference. In the Bhagavad Gita, it says, very um, well-known, famous saying, that no effort on this path of dharma, and dharma is a virtue, moral responsibility, right, right living, um, no effort on this path is ever lost and no harm is done. Even very little of this dharma saves a person from great fear. So that's in the Bhagavad Gita, um, encouraging, confirming that no effort you make is ever lost. Even It may get covered over. The light may appear to be switched off again. You switch it on again. But that effort you made is never lost. I've always found that very encouraging. So all efforts on this path of darkness to light are for the collective, not just for ourselves. So everyone benefits. Everyone from every effort each one of us makes. They all count. Every bit counts. Okay? And, you know, we can choose in any moment if we catch ourselves thinking a negative thought or hearing negative self, self talk in our minds or um, feeling some sort of negative feeling um, or negative speech coming out of our mouth or in our minds. We can always pivot and change it, turn it around, reframe it, go for the positive. It's totally worth it because just keep that bigger picture. We are contributing to the uplift of everyone, the collective in this present moment. So sometimes it may seem like a tiny speck, a drop, a drop, a drop, but you keep going and the momentum builds. I'll tell you, there's been studies done and human being on average thinks about 60,000 thoughts per day. That's average, 60,000 thoughts per day. Okay. And from the studies, 80% of them, and this is from the National Science Foundation, somewhere between 12 to 60,000 thoughts per day. I've heard 60 just because, you know, they're flitting through the mind. And out of that 60,000, 80% of them are negative. 80% of them are negative, saying that again. And out of that 80%, 90 95% of that 80%, so most of that 80% of negative thoughts are repetitive thoughts. There's nothing new in that. So it's a cycle of negativity. So if we repeat those negative thoughts, we think negative way more than we think positive. All right, And that's happening habitually and unconsciously, inadvertently. So it does take us to lift our game, be intentional, be deliberate. We want to be positive. So to turn this around, if this is your experience, we need reminders. We need physical reminders. We need energetic reminders. We need to form a new habit. And to form a good habit, a conscious habit, it takes a minimum of repeating something 12 to 15 times a day for a minimum of 28 days. And that's like a little shoot growing, okay, and it's a bit vulnerable and fragile but the shoot is there and then we can work to strengthen it but it takes about 12 to 15 times a day for 28 days okay so think of that that's what we need to turn around and I consciously made efforts to turn my thinking around to the positive and I did it years ago and it changed everything I cannot emphasize to you how it just changed everything doesn't mean I don't still work on it but it changes everything. And I realise the value and importance of energetic reminders to support my memory. Eckhart Tolle says, the primary cause of unhappiness is never the situation, but the thoughts about it. Be aware of the thoughts you are thinking. Okay. So finally, practice. Here we go. Catch yourself habitually saying or thinking something that might be negative, judgmental about yourself or another and replace it deliberately with something uplifting, positive and unifying. Like I'm always hopeless at staying organised, replace it with I'm flexible and open to the opportunities in each moment. Okay. Or I must get fit and get and I must exercise and get fit. We'll replace it with I get to exercise and get fit. How fantastic. So I can enjoy my life and my friends and my family. All right. 
And what about that person said something offensive to me? Well, replace it with that person maybe is having a bad day and they feel safe around me to express it. Okay, just turn it around. Have a bigger picture. It's worth it. Add to the collective uplift. Prefer the positive to the negative and move from darkness to light. Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya. Move from darkness to light. Every bit counts. It makes a real difference. Every bit counts. And my next show, I'm going to be talking about healing the world through random acts of kindness. And that's a flow on from this. So if you want to know more about Damayanti and the exciting developments, go to my website, damayanti.store, and sign up for the uh, newsletter. And then you can be kept in touch with all the latest developments and there are some exciting ones coming not saying much about it at the moment so get the newsletter and you'll know and i have a brand new etsy store called all things eternal all things eternal and there's some really fun catchy gear um with positive upbeat lift um, and uplifting reminders so go to etsy all things eternal shop it's called all things eternal shop and go to my website damayanti.store And let's finish off with some beautiful, uplifting Sanskrit. May all be happy. May all be free of disease. May all see what is uplifting and no one suffer in misery of any sort. May peace and peace and peace be everywhere. This is the universal prayer for all. So thank you for joining me. And here's this beautiful, uplifting Sanskrit. Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhina. Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashantu Ma Kaschidu Kabhag Bhavet Om Shanti 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 Thank you for spending time with me on Damayanti, the show for your soul. To find out more about Damayanti or to get my book, Conscious Confidence, Use the Wisdom of Sanskrit to Find Clarity and Success, or to purchase my range of beautiful spiritual jewellery, go to my website, damayanti.store. That's damayanti.store. See you next time.